Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. I want to thank you for wel welcoming us into your home this morning for worship. It is an, always an honor that you would choose to worship with us. I do have a couple of announcements this morning as we get started. Next Sunday, we will be having drive-in church once again here in the parking lot. So if you are local to Miller here, please join in with us uh, in the South parking lot next Sunday morning. If you are not local to Miller, uh, there will be a pre-recorded service that goes live here on Facebook at 9.30. Uh, for those of you uh, who worship with us, there is a survey out there on our Facebook page, or if you're on our newsletter mailing list, you should have gotten it either in your email or in your regular mail. Uh, the survey is about returning to in-person worship, which we are tentatively planning for July 12th at this point. I would ask all of you, if you haven't done so already, to fill out that survey and make sure that that gets back to us no later than next Sunday. We've also been asked to announce that there will be a blood drive here in Miller on July 6th and 7th at the Lutheran Church. If you are interested in giving blood, you can contact Jodine Joy, and I will be posting information about that, including her phone number, on our Facebook page a little bit later on today, so you can look there for that information. With that, let's turn our hearts and our minds to worship as we sing together our opening song, There's a Spirit in the Air. We bring with us our cares and concerns, our joys and our sorrows. Touch our hearts and heal us, Lord. Make us ready to become your faithful disciples. Amen. 
Our first scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. Listen now for the word of God. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thus ends our reading. We now have an opportunity to present our tithes and our offerings to God. As always in this time of distance worship, we have a few different ways for you to present your offerings. Those can be mailed into the church. Uh, they can be brought to the church building itself, or you can contact Coin Bank here in Miller, regardless of where you bank, and they will help you set up automatic giving. Let's give our gifts to God.
Let us pray together as we dedicate our gifts to God. Gracious God, your hospitality has surrounded us and welcomed us, even when we only grudgingly extended hospitality to sisters and brothers who are also your children. May we grow each day in our willingness to be welcoming disciples, not just to those who look like us, talk like us, or think like us. May our offering this morning be received not just in gratitude for your hospitality, but as our way to extend comfort and welcome to those for whom your love is a mystery. We pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Listen now for the word of God. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My family would tell you and my kids tease me a lot because I have a thing for pineapples. I have a pineapple doormat. Inside of our front door, there's a, a, a sign that welcomes you to our home and it's got a pineapple on it. I have pineapple knickknacks. Just look around our house and you will find plenty of pineapples. Now, it's not that I just like the fruit. I, I mean, I do, but that's not why I have pineapples everywhere. Do you know why pineapples are often found on door knockers, doormats, uh, newel posts at the end of staircases, and in dining room centerpieces? Pineapples are a symbol of hospitality. And they have been since uh, the Victorian times in England. At that point in history, pineapples were a rare foreign delicacy. So if you really wanted to impress your guests and show them at a glance that you would do anything to make them welcome, you'd have a pineapple for them. But since many could not afford real pineapples, soon the mere symbol or representation of a pineapple sent the same message. A pineapple on your front door's knocker said, you are welcome here. They became a symbol of hospitality, generosity, friendship, and welcome. You know, usually in scriptures, when we read about being hospitable, we see the call to welcome the stranger, the call for us to be hospitable in our nature. But this reading comes at that idea from a different angle. The reading from Matthew talks about how people welcome us when we come as bearers of the word. Now, if we only just read those few verses that I read a moment ago, it could appear to apply to anyone, anywhere. But if we read it in the context of the entire chapter, we can see that Jesus is talking about what it means to follow him. He's sending his disciples out on mission. He's told them of the dangers that they're going to face. He's told them that they're going to be sheep among wolves. But now he's giving them the good news. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. When you go to someone to share the word of God with them, if they roll out the red carpet for you, if they welcome you with a pineapple, if they open their hearts to receive the word that you have to share, then they welcome Christ. They welcome God. 
Now you may wonder, well, how is that good news for me? Well, first off, it means that you're not alone. That God goes with us, that Christ goes with us. And that makes the whole going to share the word that much easier. Knowing that we are not left to our own devices to do that. But I do want to flip this reading a little bit. What if we aren't the ones to bring the word? What if we aren't the disciples out on mission? What if we are the ones to whom disciples come to share the word? Now, I would like to think that I, and I bet most of you, would, would like to think that if St. Peter came knocking on our door, wanting to share a word about Jesus with us, that we'd invite him right on in. We would do all that we could to make him feel welcome. But I can at least speak for me. I, I've never had a Galilean fisherman show up knocking on my door wanting to talk about Jesus. That's just not how things work in my life. Let me tell you a little story. Every week for my seminary classes, we have a Zoom call. Now, sometimes it's just a check-in to see how everyone is doing, but sometimes we get into theological discussions. Our, our faculty mentor chooses a topic that we might need to learn about, and he is so good at just throwing out questions that kind of turn your world upside down. He can challenge our preconceived ideas about God. He can make us see the work that God is doing in the world in a way that we hadn't seen before. And sometimes that is so cool and amazing. But you know, other times it's a challenge. Sometimes we just get smacked in the face with the fact that we had something about God completely wrong. Sometimes we're forced to face the fact that we are not living in God's way in a certain area of our lives. Sometimes our entire worldview gets shaken up. And let me tell you, I don't always welcome that. You see, it's, it's so much more comfortable to not be challenged. To not have to face my own failings. But I have to remember this passage how do I welcome not only the messenger that brings God's word to me, but how do I welcome the message itself? Do I welcome them? Or do I put up walls to protect my comfort, to protect my ego, to protect my worldview? How do we welcome the disciples that are on mission to us? And I had to think about that Thursday as I sat down to write this message because I had just finished one of those calls where we were challenged a little bit. One of my fellow students, you could see, had had her ideas about God upended that morning. And she wasn't quite sure how to respond. She was even kind of just a little fidgety on the call. You could see physically she was uncomfortable. And, and another one of the students said, hey, Steph, I see you squirming there a little bit. That discomfort you're feeling, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was stretching her in ways that were not comfortable. Have you ever stretched just a little bit too far and felt that uncomfortable pull or, or worse yet, that sharp snap? Stretching too far can leave us limping, stiff, and sore for days. But as we heal, we find that we can stretch a little bit further than we did before. And, and if you keep at it, if you keep stretching, everything loosens up a little bit. That's how it can be when our spirits get stretched. When our understanding of God and God's work in the world gets stretched. Sometimes we get stretched further than what is comfortable. But in the end, it is good for us. In the end, we grow and we are better for having been stretched. 
But so often we resist that stretch in the first place. We're comfortable where we are with what we know, with what we think we understand. And we don't want to be challenged. We don't want to be upset. We don't want God to be anything other than what we understand right now. So how do we react when messages and messengers come our way? Do we welcome them and with them welcome God and Christ in the fullness of who God is, not just in our limited understanding? Or do we get defensive? Do we say, no, that's not what I believe. That's not what I've been taught. Do we slam the door in the face of those coming to bring us the word? Not a literal door, but the door to our heart, the door to our mind. This passage, as well as countless others in Scripture, tell us to welcome people. In Hebrews, we are told to welcome the stranger because they may be angels in disguise. I'll go one step further. Listen to others because they may be messengers of God. Welcome them, for with them you welcome Christ. With them you welcome God. They may not come bearing flowers or gifts. They may not come gently. They may not come quietly. The words you need to hear may come from an enemy. The stranger you must welcome may come in the guise of someone you revile, you fear, or you hate. But we are called to welcome, to love all the people. We are to show no partiality because God shows no partiality. God chose us, welcomed us in the midst of our mess, of our faults, and of our sin. God welcomed even us. So who are we to slam the door in the face of others? When we think we know better, when we think we don't have any more to learn, or at the very least, we don't need to learn anything from them, then we are committing idolatry. We have made an idol of our ideals, of our point of view, even of our very selves. But we cannot worship God if we worship our own ideology. God's word to us doesn't always make us feel better. God's word led Moses back to Egypt where he was wanted for murder. God's word led the Hebrews to wander for 40 years in the desert. God's word led Daniel into the lion's den. God's word led Stephen to being stoned to death. God's word blinded Paul. God's word is convicting. And it can be more hard-hitting than we are hard-headed. But if we open ourselves up to truly listening, truly learning, and truly growing... If we welcome the word of God instead of putting up barriers to it, we will have an easier time of it. It still may cause us growing pains, but it will be worth it. So let's not just resign ourselves to try to listen. Let's welcome others. Let's throw open the door to all others. Let's love all the people and see what we can learn about God from them. Get those pineapples ready. We got a lot of people to welcome. Amen. We turn now to our time of prayer. If you have not already done so, I hope that you will uh, put your prayer concerns in the comments. Um, We'll get those coming up to me here in just a moment. But there are a few things that I want to lift up in prayer this morning. Uh, we have been holding Truman Patrick Howard in our prayers. He is the grand nephew, I believe, of Terry and Marsha um, and has been battling cancer. And he had surgery a little over a week ago. Um, we just need to continue for little Truman. Um, pray that God's healing and strength just surrounds him and that he can overcome this obstacle in his life. Obviously, next Saturday is the 4th of July, and, and with it, we know that there's a, a lot of folks who will be traveling. Um, there's a lot of fun with fireworks to be had. 
Uh, there will be a lot of family gatherings, and we just pray for everyone's safety over the holiday weekend. Um, not only just the typical safety that we pray for every 4th of July for traveling mercies and, and that sort of thing, but in this time of pandemic, we pray that uh, we don't see further spread of the virus from these gatherings. And on that note, we have seen in the past week or so uh, the virus spiking in certain areas. Um, Florida and Texas, uh, Arizona especially, are, are being hard hit right now. And so we pray for those areas. Um, we pray that everyone, everyone, takes the precautions necessary to slow the spread of this virus. After all, taking those precautions is a way to show love to our neighbor. Do we have other prayer concerns this morning? Here we go. Prayers for Joe Poindexter's family. Joe passed away the other day, and so we remember, um, we remember Joe and all that he has meant to so many, and we surround his family with our thoughts and our prayers. Continued prayers for Steve Ellsworth and John Carr, both of whom uh, have um, spent some time in the hospital and, and uh, are on the road to recovery, and we need, just need to continue to hold them in prayer. Uh, also prayers for Alana Howard. Oh, and there's one more coming, so just bear with me just a minute. Andrea is frantically writing. I would just remind everyone uh, that not only the prayers that you find in the comments, but we know that there are other prayer concerns that we hold in our hearts, and we lift those up to God as well. We also pray for Christy Danberg's dad. I'm going to, as we hold all of these in our hearts, I'm going to invite you into a time of silent prayer, and then I'll guide us through the remainder of our prayer time. Let us pray. Lord, we talk so easily about being a friendly church. We like to think of ourselves as a place where everyone is welcomed but our welcome should not stay confined to these walls. We are called to adopt attitudes of hospitality to others who may not return the favor. We are called to be willing to take the risk of hospitality in our workplace, in our homes, our community, everywhere we go. You reached out to people in all kinds of conditions. Many of these people had been rejected by their society and even their families. They were in need of compassionate greeting and friendship. Lord Jesus, as you have welcomed us, regardless of our faults and failings, let us also be a welcoming presence to all in your name. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is wounded world that cries for healing. Let us sing together. <clears throat>
And now receive the benediction. As we go from this place, may we open our hearts to welcome the stranger and friend alike. May we remember that God can speak to us through all others. Let us approach the world with love and listening and welcome. Go in peace. Amen.